Hi guys, I'm Sonia, and I'll be talking today about um, the order book implementation in C++20 using concepts and coroutines. So this is the part two follow-up on the previous video where I walk you through the whole solution from the beginning. In this uh, video, I will tackle the problem of coroutines. Can coroutines become normal functions by policy. Can I introduce a policy that will uh, control whether a function is a function or coroutine, right? Well, this is the answer to this question. The answer is no, you cannot. So I vote for this one. I vote for this proposal with all my heart. I will vote and shout, I want this proposal in the new C++. Seriously, this is the most missed thing right now. In C++, you want to control every single thing with policies. You want to have a policy saying, I want to control whether it's a coroutine. And I cannot. Why? I tell you what's the problem. So I implemented this, um, you know, policy for controlling whether it is coroutine or not. So you can see I have this match result policy. It's a new policy. And this policy has a result type. Okay. So you can see that the result type Defining this policy controls whether the return type of this function is a generator or if it is something else. Now, based on the fact that return type is a generator, then it is a, a, a coroutine uh, eligible function, right? So the problem that uh, you know this introduces is that I cannot have it in a single function. No, I cannot. I had to split it into two functions, right? I had to use sfine. So I used sfine to tell that this function will be just a function and this other one here, that it will be a coroutine. You can see they're identical. They're identical functions. Just look at this. It's the same for loop whatsoever. The only difference between these two functions is that, you know, I know that this is not a coroutine, so I don't have to do if cons expression here. But if I could use this, if I could use this, you know, if cons expression, then call return, call yield, call await, otherwise do just normal things, you know, then I would just have one implementation and I would put here, you know, something like I did here, because this one still can work. But uh, you know, for the for this guy as well, right? So this one would be if cons expression is is generator. Okay, I would put that. If cons expression is generator, then we do uh, where is this co yield, and uh, otherwise we do this, right? So this match result policy, what is it? It is a magical policy that if it is defining um, a coroutine, right? It is If it is telling you that this is a policy that we use coroutine, then the result type is a generator. And if that's the case, then it is very simple. It doesn't do anything more than that. It only defines the result type and uh, all the results are just yielded back to the user using zero yield into the generator, right? However, if it is a uh, normal, not a coroutine uh, return policy, then um, then this return type is something else. It's not a generator. It's a regular return type. And what it is, is defined by result policy. But what do we do with all the executions? And we have to be high performance as well. We don't want to be copying vectors of executions. So what we do is we pass here this policy, right? the same as in the other version, but this policy is an object that can carry some data in it. The user defines what is inside. And, uh, you know, I, I also defined this local um, local uh, value for the result type, right? So I split uh, this match result policy in this case into two kind of ways. One is the result type of, the, of this policy. And another is, internal state update, right? Then the another stage is match result policy gets called for every execution. And you pass here this result, the local variable. 
and this execution that we generated that was uh, processed by execution policy. So you can see that whenever we do a match, we apply execution policy to that match, which can change the match, we can reduce the quantity. And then match result policy will take whatever is the result of this execution policy and process it and you know collect it right somewhere. And then at the end, we just return the result, the result that we defined in the beginning, right? So what is it, the, the, the real, real life, you know, match result policy, what, what does it look like? So I defined two versions. One is the generator one. So as you would expect, it's very, very simple. The result type is generator, that's it. That's all it is. So execution generator policy is a policy defining result type that is a generator of order quantity of order type. Done. And this is just the old version, the coroutine version. And then if the result type is generator, we can go to the second, um, second one here. So this is enabled if it's a generator. You can see if it's generator, match result policy result type is generator. So this match order is enabled then. And what happens is we co-yield here. Right now, um, the other uh, match result policy we have is collect execution policy. Collect execution policy carries in itself uh, a Q type of executions. Now, I, I I don't want to make too many design decisions. Right, we know very well that design decisions are a perfect way to get technical depth. Um, so we have this collect executions policy. So that's a logical level, you know. What are we going to do in the algorithm? I don't operate on, I make, a, you know, decisions right now, design decisions. I'm going to use a vector. Instead, I'm going to say, I have this non-asynchronous version, this synchronous version. And what synchronous version needs to do? What are the requirements? Requirement is that if I'm returning a value, I need to initialize it somehow in the beginning. And I need to return it at the end. So that's, you don't question this. Second thing is for every time I match something, I need to inform this policy that I you know, made a match. So I invented that I will be using the operator, call operator. So I'm using call operator with the result to initialize first result. And I'm using call operator with result and executed to update the result as well as do something with internal state of this policy, right? And then I return the result. So we can see that this collect executions policy has two overloads of this operator. One of them is just setting the result type to zero, right? It's just initializing with zero. And second one is doing two things. It's incrementing the result by quantity that was executed. And it uh, emplaces into the executions that we have here. Um, you know, this execution that we have here, right? So you can see I'm using this forwarding magic. Here, the type deduction happens. So these types are the same, you see, is same result type and and R removes CVREF, you know? So that, that's the trick. And we can see that executions um, is a queue where we append this, uh, this next execution. And of course, um, you know, it is it is a template type, Q type. Uh, so we have Q, Q type being underscore Q type with this particular order quantity order type put here by this policy here, right? And we have this requires to check that this actually is a Q. Right. Um, so what's next? So this this is the this is the synchronous one, right? And then the asynchronous one uh, permits the uh, execution policy to be both asynchronous or synchronous. So the uh, it, it it is a coroutine that returns a generator, right? You get a generator because we coiled executions, but the policy for executions does not need to be asynchronous. So we can still be yielding the executions to the user, but we don't need to await on execution policy. Maybe you have synchronous execution policy. 
I put this um, const expression if here to check if we see an asynchronous execution policy, and then we call wait on it. Otherwise, we just execute it. You might be interested to know what are those things doing? What is this is generator? Uh, how do I know if it's asynchronous? How do I know if it's a generator? And that's what I'm gonna have a look at with you now. So generator is some structure which I have defined. So C++ doesn't really care what is the type as long as it has inside of it a promise type, okay? So a function, a coroutine must return something that holds a promise type type inside it. So this generator has a promise type inside it. Now the promise type, in order for it to be a promise type, it has to have yield value for what I need it for, right? So yield value is, return, is required for it to be a generator. Um, perhaps if it's not a generator, then you wouldn't be using yield value. There's also co return, right? But I need a, I need co yield to work correctly. So I need yield value. So I'm saying my promise concept, which, which would be generator promise concept, is that um, if there is a yield value, okay? So something that has a yield value is my generator promise concept. I don't have anything else, so it's a, I call it promise concept, but it's for generator. So this is yield value. Now, generator concept is something that has a type promise type inside it, which is matching promise concept. So that's how I decide, de define what is a generator concept, right? So we have a generator concept. So how do we now um, tell whether, you know, the return type of our policy is a generator or not? So let's look again. So um, is generator is my trait, right? And how I'm using it. I'm just saying enable if and is generator my result type. And then, you know, the type of what we're generating. So if this is generator of those things, if this is generating those things. So generator, is T a generator of A, right? And generator of integers, A is an integer. A generator of floats and so on. So how do I know if it's a generator? Well, the T of A has to match generator concept. So this is what I'm doing. I'm defining this helper test here, which says, okay, does my uh, type T match this specialization of test or does it fall into generic version of it, right? If it's just generic type name, then it will be STD false, right? Um, if it is, um, if the T matches, um, if the T matches the generator concept of A, then then it is like this. Pr pretty cool thing here is look, it's it's a concept with with this parameter A here, right? So this is actually this is actually a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah, so this is how I evaluate values. So say test, right? So we we choose struct test, specialize it with uh, with T. But I have discovered that I have to use this remove CVREF all the time, because if I don't do that, then I will not match this generator concept because I kept getting const ampersand everywhere or double ampersand, you know. But I think I'm passing a result type here. So the result type itself would be, um, in this case, the result type would be just, uh, just a type, um, you know, it is a generator. So that would be a correct type. So it's it's for in, for this particular trait here, um, maybe this remove CVREF is not 100% required. Test T would probably work as well for that particular case. But, you know, for, for, for consistency, you know, I just say remove CVREF just in case someone passed here uh, const T ampersand, you know. In case of is Q or is range, I don't have to do that because my T of A is, you know, I'm constructing a type. The T itself is a template. It cannot be a reference. So that's a different different scenario, right? In case of generator, uh, T is a concrete type. Is actually, you know, can be a, a reference. So the other other um, other trait I did was for the async execution policy, right? So for async execution policy. You can see here, I have this const expression. If it's an async execution policy, then I co-await an execution policy. Otherwise, I just call it. So essentially saying that invoking uh, brackets op operator here, uh, if, if it's not returning awaitable, I just invoke it like this. 
if it's returning something that matches a weightable concept, then I go away. So here we go. Here's my concept. So we have is async execution policy, right? So here we have is async execution policy trade. This is a trade telling us if it is an async execution policy. And um, here's how we do it. We use the same technique. So I have a test which takes any X and I have a specialization of this test for async execution policy concept, right? With A, which I define here. We see that the concept of async execution policy requires that this returns a weightable concept whereas the non-async does not have any requirement. We don't know what it returns. So be, because you can say something matches execution policy concept and it can be async or not, right? So we look into here, you can see we have this execution policy concept and here we check, but is it async or not? And here we test for it. And again, I remove CVREF because it can be const reference. So I will be passing here execution policy by value when I'm using the no operation one. And I'm also passing here by reference when I'm using um, this policy that truncates the orders to quantity, right? So so yeah, so that's why I, I need to use here the um, remove CV ref. And yeah, this controls now whether I'm gonna be calling it synchronously or asynchronously, and when it is used asynchronously, um, this has to be a generator. So it's only possible to do that in this version of this match order, which is a coroutine. And in this one, which is not a coroutine, I cannot be doing that. So I'm assuming that is async execution policy, you know, that's that's not there, right? Right, so why would I like to see this implemented in the new C++ standard? Um, because you see, you use just one implementation of the function, not two, right? So Svina is cool and so on, and maybe not so cool, but the um, problem is, the main problem is that I have to have this implementation, and then I have to have this, this second implementation, right? So I have two implementations of the same thing. You see, I have two implementations. And I could have one. I would prefer to have one. You know, when it's one, it's easy to maintain. When it's two, it's I change something here, and then I have to do the same change here, right? So that's that's not nice. And it's not really possible to split it or anything like this because this is already very atomic what it's doing. So, you know, it's 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 essentially some simple algorithm, and I have to just copy and paste the same algorithm into two functions just because one is coroutine and the other one is not. And it's sad. And then the caller has to call it differently, and the caller itself will become a coroutine or not, depending on whether this is coroutine. So this is kind of contagious, right? It's contagious. So order book uh, accepts the order, and then when it accepts order, it calls on the side to match order. So this is what we call. And then this is my experiment to choose either one or the other. So by just, you know, constant false and, or true or false, I'm just saying we go with the, uh, you know, asynchronous one, generator one, or we going with the synchronous one, right? But uh, here's what happens next. This has to return generator, right? So, you know, this match order detail also returns a generator. So it doesn't really matter if I chose to go synchronously because I'm still returning a generator. And in that uh, implementation here, I'm iterating over this execution's queue, right? To, to yield back to the user. Now, why is that the case? Why can I not have this one or say just this one as two versions, right? Yeah. Coroutine and not coroutine. But you see for yourself, right? So if I wanted to go this path, then I would have to do Sfina, enable if, execute, and so on, and have two versions of this guy. Then I would go to order book, and I would have to have probably two versions of this guy as well. And then maybe I would have to still have two versions of this guy. And that doesn't really make me happy, you know? So that's why that's why I support this, con this uh, proposal that uh, 
this should work because then I can choose whether a function is coroutine or not coroutine with a policy without having to copy paste the code, having two versions of a function for each occasion. And it's not just one function. You can see that it propagates and that's the main problem because how do I, you know, how do I use one over the other? How do I use this collect executions policy instead of execution generator policy, right? If I'm a user, if I'm writing a test, I would like to use, uh, say this one to collect my execution into a vector instead of using coroutine. And I would have to pass it into, you know, this order book here, accept order, that my policy for getting the execution is to collect them into the order, into the vector that I don't want to be, you know, getting executions uh, returned to me um, from generator, right? So for that, I would need really to to have a second version of this, second version of this, and and then second version of this uh, of this other thing, you know, and that just makes me sad. <laughs> I did one second version at the top, uh, at the well, bottom level, right at the level of the of the price level. So this is the queue of orders. You have much order. Um, and you have this Fina, and this is just showing how would you do that to have two versions. But yeah, I'm not gonna go further to to propagate that. I just leave this code on on my branch here. I just leave it here on my branch Coro policy, and uh, you know I will wait until new C++ standard uh, produces something that I can use. Right. So until until I can actually you know use a cons expression to to choose between coroutine or not coroutine, you know? Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and so on. See you next time. Yep.